Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signor and so happy to be with you at the end of week two of the Johnny Depp trial. Oh my gosh, it's felt like so long. This has been consuming my whole life. I know it has as well for our first guest, the real Laura B. On camera! Oh, I love seeing your beautiful face. Welcome, Laura, to the show. <laughs> we will not let them scare us. No more. Uh, no, so, I think we're good. I love it. Uh, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing really good. I'm tired. Yeah, I no bet. No makeup Friday. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> I'm like exhausted. It's a it's a it's a lot following this trial. It's a lot of intense stuff that we're hearing, uh, frustrating yeah. stuff, one sided stuff a lot of times too, and so uh, it takes a toll. And so I, I thought this is a good op opportunity to recap a little bit what we learned this week. And I'm yeah. so happy to have you as well to uh, help fact check a few things and add some context especially yeah. that they didn't provide, um, which I think is important for us to know. We're also, Ann Silver going to be joining in a minute as well to talk about some things, but I want to start our show uh, with what I told you in the title. There are more lies being exposed by Miss Amber Heard. I mean, I, I just see yeah. this as karma. I see this as beautiful karma. Uh, the house of cards is falling. And uh, I, I want to, I want to remind you with this clip first, as we get started, let's go back yeah. a little yeah. ways to Elaine. This is an amazing find. This is Elaine. Uh, uh, what's her last, how do we say her last name? Um, Bredehoft. Bredehoft. Thank you. Uh, sorry, Amber, you should have gotten a better lawyer, but I guess they're like two peas in the pod. They seem like complete uh, abusers. <laughs> I gotta be honest, the way she treated some of those uh, witnesses. Uh, but here's, uh, Elaine, her attorney, on the opening uh, argument a couple weeks ago. I, I want you to hear it, and then we're going to show you something interesting. Now, you also heard them say that all kinds of people saw Amber that week, and she didn't, uh, she didn't have any bruises on her face. Well, let me show you this. This oh. is what Amber carried in her purse for the entire relationship with Johnny Depp. She's an actor. Do you honestly think she would have left her apartment ever without makeup? Do you think that ever. she ever would have <laughs> wanted other people to see her bruises and her cuts? This was what she used. She became very adept at it. You're going to hear the testimony from Amber about how she had to mix the different colors for the different days of the bruises. Oh my God. As they were, as they developed in the different coloring and oh how my she God. would use these to touch those up to be able to cover those. She also used concealer, foundation. You'll hear from her makeup. Uh, person that Amber didn't even leave her bedroom without having foundation on. Oh and my one God! One of the people that was at the building testified. He said she had makeup on and it would have covered that bruise. <laughs> one of the persons, guys. One per again. I called her like Uncle Louie. Like, hey guys, trust me. I got the most best evidence here. This makeup kit. It solves everything. It's called Amica Cream. You can buy it yourself. Plus all the all the. That's saying we don't have metadata. Oh, I promise. We got the biggest metadata. You're gonna love our metadata. Hey, these are these are verified. Just trust me, okay? I just. She's like the worst <laughs> salesman. It's like my cousin Vinny up here. Just saying, trust me, guys. Trust me. It's the best. Were you getting that? Because you were there, right? Were you getting? Oh my that God. Vibe? Well, first of all, I missed some of. This. I mean, we were just shocked at the makeup, but she just said that she has a witness that Amber Hood never left her bedroom without foundation. Who the heck, what witness is in her bedroom every morning to know she didn't leave without foundation on? What witness is that? I know. What person's going to hear this in the jury and think, oh, okay, well, you know, she must have never left. Well, so here's where it gets interesting. So Elaine put that out there. We haven't really gotten yeah. to Amber's testimony, but I can't wait because I wonder if I'll be able to bring this up. But whoa, what is this? Milani Cosmetics claps back after Amber Heard claims she used their product. Uh, here they are on their own official TikTok. Uh, yeah. And here, I watch this from their verified cosmetics company. Uh, I cut the music because they play a detective song, International Spy. But here they are showing it. And yeah, lo and behold, that's their product. That's their product. There it is. And it was released in 2017. Oh, my goodness. So uh, help, help me uh, <laughs> clarify this, Laura. The relationship ended when, Laura? Well, I will say the last time he would have seen her um, was June or July 2016. She tricked him to go to San Francisco. January, early January 13th, Friday the 13th, he was in the le legal office signing papers. So, so if that this was, was released in 2017, the testimony that Elaine just gave that she was wearing this product, this specific product through the whole relationship is now exposed as a lie, correct? Yeah, and people aren't grasping the other thing. She's a L'Oreal spokesperson. 
<laughs> she didn't even dupe a L'Oreal product. She's so dumb. I'm sorry, Amber. My God, you were just caught. And, and what's so, it's just watching the hubris she has to sit there. Th- I mean, and I, I'm glad we're starting here because it's going to get a lot more intense. But just look at that face as she knows her lawyer is sharing a bold faced lie. She just yeah. knows it. Yeah. And the, uh, we, uh, uh, you and, notice her makeup is going back and forth to a little more low key neutral to say, see, I'm wearing makeup and you can't tell. She's trying to do that. Isaac Garouche testified that he sat in the kitchen watching her put a face mask on. Do you think she put that on over her makeup? No, no, no. And her assi- he had her coffee own, with her in the morning. Her own assistant, who was there and employed by her, supposed to be on Amber's side, ended up hating her so yeah. much that she spilled all the beans. And yeah, admitted that she never wore makeup. She very rarely wore makeup. She because she's yep, yep. Amber seems lazy. So lazy. There's no way she's sitting there for an hours and end when she's Everyone's, walking around her house. I'm sure at events she would she, and other places, and that's what the you know the yeah. assistant said. But ridiculous. So I, mm-hmm. this look, they're gonna probably try and argue. Oh, well, I didn't mean this specific makeup. That, that's watch. That's what she's gonna. That's what they'll try to or to well, distract it. But then I she don't shouldn't know. have brought it out to the jury. She shouldn't have brought it out to the jury because she said this is what she used. Yeah, well, I hope so. they don't notice it because it would have been great to have them really show that off more to the jury when Amber's up there. And because uh, I, I imagine they'll Amber, well, not that one specifically, but one like it. That's that, that's probably all she'll say to correct this. But you heard her. You guys heard Elaine there. We all heard that's, her. That's damage yep. control. They're caught again in a lie. But that's not that's not it. Now, Laura, back me up because you've been covering this case. We love Laura B. Everyone yeah. on this Justice yeah. Daily Note knows Laura's and so many Jacks. They do a, a podcast tomorrow. We had them on. They've been covering this for a while, the road to Fairfax. And here we are. You can go back and remind us, though. Amber promised and swore up and down she did not sell anything to TMZ, correct? Yep, correct. Absolutely. That was her claim that she had nothing to do with that. She has no idea how they got it. There was speculations all over the place how they could have got it, but she was adamant it did not come from her. Well, that's interesting, Laura, because I was preparing to show this, and now it's, it, others have exposed this. But look at this email I got, and uh, I got today from, to Popcorn Planet. Uh, copyright owner using content ideas claim some material in your video. Your video is live. Uh, this is not a copyright strikes claim, but basically saying we now own your video. Uh, video title, Amber Heard Losing Big Time, the one from last night, our stream where we showed the laptop video. Copyrighted content, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, the explosive fight, TMZ Live, claimed by TMZ. But that wasn't it. I got two of them on the same video. The other one that they claimed, Johnny Depp goes off on Amber Heard, hurls wine glass, claimed by TMZ. Yeah. The, the Guys, TMZ is claiming exclusive copyright of the laptop yeah. video. So... <laughs> and it's not just me. I want to. I want to. Pro- I, I. I love Emily Baker. She's been on before, and she's a. I'm legal analyst Emily D. Baker. Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial day seven. Amber Heard's team played a video of Johnny Depp pouring himself a mega pint of wine and slamming into cabinets. Johnny Depp said on the stand that this video was illegally or surreptitiously recorded. And you can see Amber Heard trying to block the camera with a cup or a mug before he discovers it's being recorded. However, when this video was released shortly after the divorce on TMZ.com, it was speculated that Amber Heard sold the video, which she denied. And then yesterday, this happened on my video. I received a copyright claim on two videos talking about this court evidence but it's saying it's called Johnny Depp goes off on Amber Heard and someone is claiming they own the copyright to this video. Want to see who says they own it? That's right. TMZ is saying they own it. How do they own the copyright if it wasn't sold to them? I have questions. Yeah. So (laughs) to see all this come out and I I happened to me when I got this email this morning, I was like, excuse me. I actually emailed. It's nice to know lawyers. I got to be honest. I've been very lucky to have some lawyers in my camp. And so per their advice, what just so you guys have the full update, I was very quick to write back a with 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 some, you know, feedback. I wrote back um, the following response. Uh, This video is fair use. 
The clip in question was an exhibit ad admitted into evidence at public trial, was part of the proceeding and has public information, just like the testimony at the trial. The clip we played was the original clean version from the trial feed, not TMZ's website. Not It's not watermarked by TMZ. It was a rebroadcast of a public trial. I would also dispute that TMZ has, a co has no copyright claim to the video, as it was not a work of creative expression. It was recorded by Amber Heard in Johnny Depp's home in an, an uh, uh, home of an event, TMZ would need to provide evidence that it acquired the exclusive rights to that video from Amber yeah. Heard, who is the one who made the recording, and Johnny Depp, yep. who was filmed without permission in his own home in the state of California, a state that requires both parties to consent. I am more than willing to challenge and pursue this tape's actual ownership in a court of law if need be. Please let me know. Laura, I've never had a copyright claim released uh. as quickly as that one was. <laughs> <laughs> As soon as I threatened I never, and responded uh, with legal ass saying, bullshit, you want to prove who owns this tape? They did, re t t I will be honest, they released it. Now, this may have been automatic claim, it. whatever, but I think it's very telling, as Emily's and others are seeing, it's very telling here that it does seem like Amber's lying again. That why would TMZ How feel confident to do this if they didn't somehow have some sort of secret or potential ownership? What are your thoughts? Well, I don't know how it could be automatic. He, they, you didn't tag TMZ. Nobody did. This is an original video that has nothing to do with TMZ well, with a full start and a full finish that no one's seen. Some YouTube background. They, their, their algorithm, their AI is insane. Literally, okay. I can have songs, okay. video playing. It's all auto. They can sometimes just automatically okay. claim what they own. So that, to be fair to TMZ, maybe so somehow. maybe they claim all their content. I do. I like to be fair. And, and it may have just been all their content that has an auto. So anytime you do it and then when you challenge, they just clear it. It doesn't prove it 100%, but it's funny. It's definitely sus suspect and it's fishy. Yeah. And uh, it, it just, it it, it's playing like, because usually TMZ has clips that their photographers take, right? And then they sell it. And then right, therefore right. they would own it. So again, it implies Amber was the photographer and sold it to TMZ and they felt confident to yep, click the button yep, to absolutely. allow the auto claims to grab it. And now that it's been shown in a court of law, they can't challenge back, which usually TMZ does. They're very frustrating. I never use their footage anymore because they just suck big time. But yeah, I mean, regardless, it w even with that explanation, I still feel like it's sus. You agree. This this looks like yeah, Amber I sold it. For sure. And I don't know why Johnny's lawyers couldn't have gotten it taken down right from the beginning. It's an illegal recording. He had no idea. So I'm not sure how these things are able to happen, but I guess we have them all the time with sex tapes and whatnot. Yeah, it's interesting because I remember I watched the Pam and Tommy show and it was like, it was just so depressing how that revealed that Pamela Anderson had no cause of action. They're like, well, you were in Playboy, so therefore this is public domain now. That's how it worked back then. And so they were allowed to mm -hmm. stream it. They weren't allowed to profit from it. And it was, it's a, the, the, and then paparazzi law is another big complicated thing of like celebrities have been suing. The fact that this was in Johnny's home without his permission, though, yeah. does make this one even more complicated. So it doesn't surprise yeah. me that that TMZ released the claim because this would be a I would have I wish they didn't because I would have loved to pursue this legal action and figure out who does yeah. own this to clip TMZ. Uh, so I, I, maybe they won't. I hope Emily or somebody else can figure out how to pursue it, because that would indeed be fascinating. Well, I, hope that, I hope they ask her. Did yeah, you we'll notice something out. really interesting? At the very start of the video, can you pull it up to the very like first frame of her? Which one? Of her in that in the video with the kitchen video. Can you pull up to, like the first frame or so when she comes in? Oh, uh, I think it's pretty interesting for the jury to catch this. I have to download the original one. Was it on the? Um... Oh, the one that, whatever one. Oh, you don't have it at all to play. No. Okay, I, so the. Go. I'll, I'll try and find it quickly. Well, they just made a big deal about this photo of drugs on the table right right three lines of coke all of this set up and nobody there to use it i mean i guess johnny just set it up pulled up a glass of whiskey and just went to work and figured i'll have it here when i get home tonight it's on this it's on photo. the uh, i can download it here right yeah, I don't remember which one it is. I think it's it this would one. be the movie. It'd be the movie. There yeah. There you go. I did find it fast. But you want, but you want to go back to that photo after that you just saw when you when you have a chance after you play this. I do have it. They're they're gonna claim me again. I'm sure. Here we go. Oh, uh, then don't. Yeah. <laughs> well, if we just do a still, we should be fine. Uh, let's see here. Does it work? I don't get you in trouble. It, work? it may have been moved or edited. There it oh. is. There it is. I got it now. Oh, uh, it won't play. <laughs> Hold on one second, guys. Bear with me. I gotta show you this. 
Rename PCs. You guys can hear it. Hold on. Oh. Where is it playing? Stop playing. Close. I was like, where's it going? Yeah. I don't want them to. I can't play it here. I can't play okay. it here. Okay. Well, she walks in to the door, right? She has a purse on her shoulder. What's she got in her hand? She's got John, the coffee cup, the portable cup that's in that drug photo that they're saying belongs to John. She's reason, got the video, cup in her hand. The video won't show. She, oh, I see what you're talking. Oh. You're talking about the cup. Yes. Yeah, Thank go you. back to that other one on Twitter. I, 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 there's a the photo. Someone the sent, If that's what you're referring to, I have a better example. Someone sent me uh, a, 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 a still of that, if that's what you're referring to. Yes. Yeah, there's there's Here three of them that Here exist. But she's got, there you go, That's she's got the is. cup. So in the, yes, the sorry, as we... the jury puts it together. The, the, the cup from the beginning of that laptop video is Amber's cup. And then Amber's yep. cup happens to be there on that prearranged photo with everything all pull it That's her home. Out there. Remember, this is in her home, not in Johnny's home. This is in Orange Avenue that she was living. This is her home. And I find it quite suspect that there's two drinks there. People are saying this is a blunt box, not meant for cocaine it's yeah no it's not cigarettes, he, uh, johnny, that's the size johnny schooled them if we're fact checking anything i think johnny did that the best when he's like they, we well it would drip a line of cocaine as you walked around uh welcome Ann silver how you doing Ann? How, thanks for being hi. here hi i i so we at you at you hi, did, you got hi. uh meet laura it's so uh oh laura the real oh, so laura great B. To meet you. Uh, you too we uh you uh, we're happy to announce that you have now finished that uh piece uh that you have up uh which yeah. basically breaks to is the link in here here's the analysis your analysis on hey, the Andy, marriage can counselor. We back up one minute sure yeah that picture that you had of the table yep on the tampon thing is, is there a tamp oh i didn't the, just close that did i that's what she's Hold using on. they're saying that johnny liked to use Anyway, there's a photo on Amber Heard's Instagram of her and Rocky with that. With tam there was a tampon there? Did I just with really the miss tampon that? Uh, applicator, right? Applicator, yeah, the applicator. There's if there's a picture still on her her uh, Instagram with that. I don't know if I could send it to you. I would. I don't know. Here, sorry, I messed up on my. There it is. Uh, this was this photo you're talking about. I closed it by accident, and then I. Hold on, sorry, bear with me. We're live. History, come on, history. <laughs> no, it was this. Du, 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 du. Thank you to Karoosh who sent me this. Uh, there we go. Uh, that's it. Yeah, why is there a tampon you there? <laughs> Did you want me to send this to you in Twitter? I see it well, this now. Is this is something that apparently. The... No, no, I got another one for you. This is apparently what Whitney had learned to use to sniff up cocaine. And she was claiming Johnny liked that idea. Uh, but then if you look on Amber Heard's there Instagram oh, photo, there and I'm sending it to you. Yeah, I'm sending it to you now. There's a tweet, but there's a photo in that where Rocky and Amber have them. There they are. Uh, you can hit the right. Now hit the next photo. There they are. There it is. Fact checking. Oh. It was worth it. That, wow. That's so. Yeah. And there it is. She's so bad at lying. <laughs> I can't wait for her to come on the stand. I got to be honest, because it's going to be very entertaining to watch her try to like eh, tell this story. It's just not going to work. Uh, so I'm very fascinated. Well, to see what, how this these, goes. what these personalities do is when they're caught in a lie, they create a new lie. So, let, yeah. so there we go. Let's go back. So you you wrote uh, Anne wrote has done a lot of nice uh, analysis and research. Uh, she did a great one about the yes. audio tapes way back. But you just took a lot of time and you went through the entire transcribed the entire marriage counselor conversation as well. Correct. Correct. Uh, right. So you guys, I'll put the link in the in the uh, description. You guys can watch in the comments. I, I, what's the biggest takeaway here that we, that you've surmised when you saw this? Since we're so fact checking a lot, things, but I'll, I'll I'll start. There's a lot, but I'll start with the the soundbite that media grabbed from the marriage counselor's testimony, and that was that the marriage counselor said it was mutual abuse in her opinion, and so that's what media is running with, and uh, and I noticed uh, this people confusion that it created for uh, people on Twitter because uh, the, the basic DV community, the, you know, the powerhouse of DV community does not believe in mutual abuse. Right. I believe in mutual abuse, 
but they don't. So why they don't is because they don't believe that women abuse men. They believe men abuse women because of patriarchy. So if men abuse women because of patriarchy, you cannot have mutual abuse because women can't abuse. From my perspective and those of us who see and work in the area of abuse comes in all gender configurations and couples, we do believe that there is such a thing as mutual abuse. Some people call it bi-directional, but there's some criteria. It, it's, it can't be just this loose term of, you know, somebody name calls somebody and of course, oh, okay, we could call that abusive. And the other person punches them. That's not mutual abuse. And, right. and so she doesn't meet her uh, testimony of what happened in their counseling appointments doesn't meet the criteria that I see hmm. for an equality uh, condition for calling it mutual abuse. Well, and like the biggest red flag, which I think I've called out in a previous video, is the fact that she was telling the counselor that this happened in the morning when in all other claims, they all say it was in the evening. Um, and I know Are you she, talking about the December 15th, Yeah, right, when she was referring to it, it's just suddenly, uh, even in that time period, she forgot it was the morning and the night. That's not a, that's a pretty big red flag, is it not? Uh, she was uh, at the counselor. She was talking to the counselor on the phone the very same day as this supposed December 15th uh, feared for her life um, incident. And in the testimony of the therapist, Dr. Anderson. Dr. Anderson says that Amber reported that she hit Johnny and that she hit Johnny because he was incoherent um, and on drugs. Okay, so somebody who's incoherent on drugs is, is probably this sort of docile version of, or, you know, uh, of Johnny that we see sometimes in, in her videos. Not an, not a aggressive person, but rather right. a um, docile, incoherent. Yeah, is how she labeled him. So that's what she tells uh, the, the marriage therapist. And and by the way, the marriage therapist, Dr. Anderson, meets with Amber four times alone, mm -hmm. and Amber controls the narrative for the therapist. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not only does she meet with her four times alone, they only have four couples appointments. And there's four times alone with Amber. And Dr. Anderson says that Amber controlled the, the joint appointments. Yep. Because she talked over Johnny. And um, in the very first couple's appointment, Johnny says, Amber hit me. And Amber takes the conversation off in a different direction. Yep. And it never comes back. I don't think it ever came back mm -hmm. in uh, joint sessions. Now you have to infer that by um, the rest of the joint sessions don't have any testimony around them. And they say that the, um, uh, the parts of the sessions that are redacted is because they're not about DV. So I'm, I'm putting yep. a couple of things together there. Yep, um, I heard that too. And, and so Amber is controlling the narrative. That's another thing that goes against any putting weight on what Dr. Anderson says when she says mutual abuse. Hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we've got all kinds of clues that Dr. Anderson does not have the whole story. Um, yeah. Again, that undermines putting weight on her diagnosis. I mean, yeah. So uh, look, there's a lot. I, 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 mean, I want to, we'll get more maybe later in the show if you're here, but I, I want to plug this so people can really go do the proper deep read as you break down a lot of the details. I mean, anything else you want to mention quickly on sort of takeaway or something else surprising to you? Um, the surprises. Let me think. Well, I, I didn't get to sleep till four o'clock this morning and I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm Pacific time. So oh, wow. <laughs> Cause I was working on this you're up early. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing the work. But yeah, I mean, anything, anything else you feel like you want to mention from it uh, to get um, people inspired to go no, look at it? Let me think and circle back to me. Okay, okay yeah, no worries. Uh, well, the, the, well, I had a question for you, Laura. I, I had a question for you. Someone just asked. Can I ask you that? Oh, uh, a oh, Step yeah, Beyond yeah. Healing says, since you were there for a lot of these days, Laura, um, can you tell us about the jurors' reactions to cross-exam? Yeah. Like, what, do, I you, think they've been 
strictly instructed to show no emotion. We have seen no emotion, not a smile, not a smirk. We see them look at Johnny. We see them look at the lawyers, the judge, the uh, look at Amber. We see them taking notes. Some are taking a lot of notes. Some are taking random notes. Um, we see them. The, the notepads are often on their lap. We can't always see them. There's a screen similar to what you see in the testimony box. You can see sometimes they semi-hide the witness because you know, they're reading, they're looking down at something. They're doing the same thing. They have those screens in front of them. So they're looking down and we don't always see their faces, but they're not reacting to anything. Hmm. Nothing. That's interesting. Can you, I don't, I don't know what you're allowed to share. So please, if I'm asking out, but like, do we know the demographics? Have they revealed that? Are you, can you tell us, is it more men, more women, young, old? The only thing I, I'm not, we were not given any instructions about what we can say or not say. I know Core TV, and then this is the one I'll reference to, so I don't get in trouble. They have somebody in there who apparently does report on jurors. I mean, on on all these cases, and she's done some kind of demographic. I to be a, a broad range of ages, which I think was unexpected. Um, Andrea Burkhart had was saying that long trial, it would be very difficult to find people who would be able to take off that long right so they were thinking it would be more older people more financially stable people that could do that but it seems to me it's a pretty broad range of ages interesting so a young old and, and male male female pretty pretty split diverse down the down the line so nothing that there to lean one way that seems like they did get a nice swath of people uh, yeah i think so okay um yeah age-wise uh, interesting. I mean, and then I, well, since you're also in the room, anything else from just like the energy or anything else that maybe we would surprise us uh, that you can sort of share of the details? Like, do that? Did, did, yeah. Do Amber and Johnny like ever attempt to accidentally look, or are they just completely <laughs> on the side? Like, what do you? She know? has her chair turned like this all the time. Um, it's also because she's across the room, so she's kind of angled toward the jury. She's angled toward the witness box. So yeah, she's definitely from the angle I'm at is definitely making contact with the witnesses. And that would include Johnny. She's also definitely making sure the jury sees her face. So should we see her reacting hmm. or trying to react or attempting to react? We also see her forget, you know, like she puts on this sad face and suddenly she'll turn to uh, Elaine and they have a giggle. She sits up. Oh yeah. I'm supposed to be starting. <laughs> you know, we, we caught her a couple of times. Oh, um, we saw her attempting to cry from our angle during the kitchen video. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I know exactly Very the moment. Le leaned over to Elaine and looked like Elaine was going to get her tissue. And then when they were doing at the end with the knife, stoic, stone cold, nothing, no well, emotion. That's perfect. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to go to that bit because I don't want to miss it because you, you posted about this. And since we're doing some recaps of the week and fact checking things, you added some context to this, Laura. And feel free, Anne, if you want to chime yeah. in on this too. But that 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 audio we played of the knife was very shocking to a lot of us. And we, I didn't know it. I hadn't heard it. I didn't know the context when we oh. were live last night. But uh, warning, I mean, just like it's just heartbreaking, literally. As Laura yeah. sort of helped yeah. to clarify here, and let's speak a little bit. Uh, don't get too Let me back explicit. Up. But yeah, yeah. It, it, go ahead, and, and don't get too into detail. Well, I was. Again. No, I'm not. But I was on the hearing in the UK when they were trying to admit this, and it's a very long video from the time they were in the hotel. So I didn't hear all of it. But this part, um, there was several parts hearing about because a lot of it was inaudible. So not this part, but other parts. So I found that interesting that from start to finish, this tape is them walking around the room at times, sitting somewhere, possibly in the bed. I don't know. But I remember a big argument in the UK that so much of it was inaudible and therefore you were losing context of some of it. So that's the only thing I could preface about that. Yeah, there was um, a lot of those tapes that yeah. felt inaudible. They were trying to claim things and even Johnny accepted one that I was like, don't accept. I didn't hear that. That was impossible to hear. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's weird. Do we know how the tapes got in? Like they, what they, what, what they, I'm pretty sure Amber's providing this one. Now there's the argument over Australia from the UK where she says, Oh, I didn't record that. I just happened to find that on my phone years later, but I didn't record that. Johnny must have accidentally recorded that. But mm -hmm. um, if you go to the end of it, you will hear her reclaim her phone and, and drop it. Oops, pick it up and turn it off where she claimed in the UK. She didn't find her phone till the next day. 
Yeah, that's why I love when we so, get real Lara B because she really has she's followed this like no other. So make sure you support her over on uh, yeah. on Twitter at the real Lara B. And uh, yeah, so regarding this, there was a whole setup about this was near the end of the relationship, correct? So this is after the recording's been made. She's talked him into coming to visit her in July. Well, he's in July. He's in San Francisco for um, Hollywood Vampire Tour. So she's convinced him to talk to her. She flies out there. She has the TRO in place, so she's not allowed to contact him, and she's not allowed to do this. And he's like the twixt in between, like, okay, if she wants to work this out, if she wants to somehow, you know, have a closure to this and stop all the all that's happening, I'll, I guess, I'll talk to her. And so she obviously directs the whole time because he has no idea he's being recorded. Although some of the video was released in the documentary, the UK made and we do see him go oh you're recording this and he picks up i think he says hi Paige, hi dave so at some point he does find out he's being recorded but we don't know at what point but during this moment so this is to say laura are you saying this so this is going to be the the audio where he um self-harms it is really despondent right at the end yeah it's in san francisco in july yeah it's before they've reached their settlement and they're going to court they're getting ready to go to court for the for the permanent restraining order. So, um, Laura, are you saying like, this is the same time where she seduced him and tried to get him into bed after, yes, after he's, their divorce had started? Yes, yes. She wanted to hug him, and it certainly sounds like at some point they might be on a bed. I don't know. That's this audio the tape with the makes. knife. You're saying the the knife was also still. So this really was some sort of potential sex thing too. Well, I think this this was, tr- this was part of her tor- torturing him. <clears throat> this this is how I read it. Is, is you're going to hear a tortured person, Ugh. and yeah. um, she is playing with him. Yeah, um, and she sets him up. Yeah, and and oh, very said, much so. Somebody said so. Um, somebody on Twitter mentioned that it was audio and not video. And so you don't really know what's going on. Laura, you could speak to this. You don't know what's going on. No. Uh, Amber could be saying anything. And uh, yeah. d- it doesn't mean it's really even relative to what Johnny's doing. Right. Because she's trying to the create head- a narrative. The headbutt comment comes out of this. That's the one that they argued about in the UK because so much of it was inaudible. There's no context she could have said, you headbutt me. No, I didn't. Yes, she did. You had no idea. I mean, she could have said the word 20 times before he finally said, I didn't headbutt your nose. I headbutt your head. Yeah. But we don't have the context of what happened before that. It's inaudible. What I posted here is the text he sent his friend Carino, his agent, after the meeting, explaining, this is what she did. This is how she got me to go there. She promised me these things. She said she wanted this to happen. So that's what is re- he's recapping, why he agreed to the meeting. And how it never happened the way he thought it was going to happen, the way she baited him. Well, and I think she felt, he felt obliged because he is a kind person and she played on his, um, she did the damsel in distress thing. I can't live without you sort of stuff. Yes. Well, they were going into settlement. He knew that. So maybe he thought, all right, I'll meet, amano, amano, get the lawyers out of the way. Just you and I meet and we'll fix this. And I think that's what he was under the impression he was going to happen. So, uh, all right, there's, uh, th- there's all this context. I've, I'm so grateful they're here because they're educating me as well, and I, that's why I love it. But So all that was happening, when we get to the part where he's pulling out the knife, though, that's at the end of this conversation when, uh, do we know, I mean, you're, you added this context of he wanted to cut out her, yeah. her out, he wanted to cut her out of his heart. He was devastated that she yes. tricked him there to get him to agree to public statements to fix her reputation. She misled him and broke his heart again. So after all that, yeah. they yep. thought they're going to get back together. And she, he realizes it's just another tactic where she's using him, which she's been doing this whole relationship. And that's then what, we're, what we heard, what she played out of context was that. And clearly it's, it's so much even more nefarious because She's sitting there playing victim, crying to this footage. But you can tell. I mean, I could tell. That was the moment Johnny was most upset, I, I felt. He, he genuinely seemed really upset that that was yeah. being played. And it really just felt like that was Amber and, like, secretly, like, told you I was going to ruin your life and destroy you in front of everybody. Mm-hmm. I guess we have, yeah. you, you put it here when it's like, why did that tape even need to be played? I, if anything, that tape made me feel more sorry for him. Um, and it didn't make me yes. feel empathetic to her at all. It was so bizarre. 
Well, it was I a bit shock and awe. You know, people aren't used to hearing people wanting to cut themselves. So it's it was shock and awe for the jury. But it doesn't, again, it, it still doesn't conf- prove all the stuff that she's been doing, or the, the defense has been doing. It's Johnny does drugs and drinks. Duh. <laughs> like, I knew that forever. Yeah. Like, I've, that, I'm not, I don't care. That doesn't mean he did, you know, that doesn't take him to, he did the thing. Uh, and even this, it doesn't mean he did it. Uh, it. It's so confusing. And she tries to play these things out of context. There were a couple other clips she played. There was a moment, I forgot to mention it last night on our recap. There was a moment when Rottenborn goes, you do know how much Amber has been there for your recovery. <laughs> and then played that quick audio clip where she's berating him, like, during his recovery in a way where I was like, that doesn't seem very helpful at all. She's trying to like no, take these no. things out of context to make herself be the, Oh, the savior. And I did it all, but I feel like it's going the opposite way. Uh, and when you hear the audio tapes, uh, since you've gone through all this, I mean, is it just all confirming everything else you've reported about her? Oh yeah. So I have heard this snippet of audio tape before and I, kn- I didn't put it on my timeline because, <clears throat> um, I, I didn't want to support this the the illegal making of a of a tape of right. somebody, uh, but it <clears throat> it did it does show a tortured person. Yeah. Um, it it's not about him abusing her. It's it's really her abusing him. Yeah. And the Constantly. result is is she he is tortured, and I think that she pushes. I don't know if she pushes her attorneys or this is just all they have or they buy her story so much, but they're playing the things that she set up. Right. She, right. She purposefully set up this situation for this tape. There's some other things that they play that you wonder why the heck would they even present that? Because it's not, not that good for them. The, the you know, Amber's side, the deep throat thing like that is Wow. So um, yeah, was that, I mean, uh, they were, I, I guess, because I, I just was so laughing, I couldn't even really understand what Rottenborn was trying to imply. But by him saying not the violent kind, that was try to impl- imply that Johnny oh does that all the time, and this time I wanted the sex thing? Like, I what, think what was, what Rot- was he trying Rottenberg to do? just has to be, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know if he's that innocent. I mean, who does not listen to that thing about I can use your throat for something else? And Amber... Totally in there. Yeah, yeah. I look forward to that. Exactly. Who doesn't know that that's that, that's them talking about a blowjob? So it's right. so stupid. And he said it like three, so many times, all proudly, like Rottenborn had dropped the mic. And I was just like, <laughs> this guy must be so bad in the bedroom, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so that uh, yeah. anyway, that was so weird. I couldn't figure out where he was trying to go, and there was so much of that. As we're doing our recap here, there was so yeah. much throughout the whole week of as Christopher Melcher was putting right. out there, like just barrage of things. With is that correct? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Is this correct? Yes. Did I read that correct? Yes. Yep. Like none of it's effective in a way. Correct. I'm kind of grateful, right? Go ahead, Laura. No, the not the information in the text is correct. It's just did I read that correctly? Am I reading the words correctly? Right. Shoot. Yeah. Right. Well, I think that it's come back. It, it speaks to um, their their lack of evidence. Amber's lack of evidence to actually support her side of the story. So they throw all this stuff, and these very practiced liars they get away with lying and just throwing stuff out there. And and she got away with it for a long time. So they just add more lies and they stay with the old ones and they just figure, you know, we're going to be able to talk a bunch of people into believing our side. We just throw a lot of stuff at them. Here, another but, good question. I mean, I see some of these guys yeah. and sorry, I haven't gotten them all, but Mo just asked a good question that I think is worth talking about. Why wouldn't the defense tell him the date of that illegal video? Good question. Cause they know these dates, right? Laura, that's all very clear. That was clearly a, well, they- a, a decided reason to not share the date then. Right. I found it interesting, too, that they shared the dates on the text, but mixed them up. They they weren't doing them in order. They intentionally were creating a narrative like they were building on each text. But one text might be 2015. The next one could be 2013. The next one could be 2016. Then we could be back to 2014. I mean, they were creating a false narrative with a timeline. But they did identify the dates on the text. No dates at all on the audios or the videos. 
Guys, there was a lot of sketchy stuff going on this week for sure. Uh, inside, yeah, inside and outside the courtroom, it just seems crazy what the the lengths that they will go to. Uh, I'm working on a video to try and look more into the flyers that they're handing outside the courtroom. That it seems oh. like they're trying to do jury tampering. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned. I'll get to that later. Uh, I, I but, pray that doesn't cause a mistrial. And so yeah, there's I pray a, that it's, doesn't they're cause. being so sneaky. It's awful. Uh, we will keep you updated as it all goes. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I it found just, the strategy. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, Rottenberg's. I thought this might not be true, but I found what I thought was Rottenberg's strategy in his cross examine. He bounced around the timeline, so Johnny could never feel like, okay, we're almost to the end. You know, if he'd done it in order and he got to like the birthday dinner, he'd be okay, one more event and we're done. But he purposely bounced all over the place, so Johnny had no sense when it might end. Wow. Yeah, that was my well, take. Johnny did get more relaxed. It seemed to me. Well, I think when he realized I'm just sitting here listening to read a text, you know, he's just <laughs> authenticating these texts so that Amber can come back on him. But some of them were so obviously jokes and ridiculous. They did come out in the UK like, um, you know, I have all these whores in the in the hotel room and I've eat, I killed some animals and eaten them. What was his point? What is he? I mean, this is just his humor. If anything, it proves more that he speaks so ridiculously that you can't take anything seriously that he's trying to say. So another word is, you know, he uses the C word. He lives in Europe. He lives in, he owns a property in France. Colloquialism. Is that a word? It's different around the world. That C word is no different than people here in America now calling women bitches. I mean, that used to be terrible. And now we're telling our girlfriends, hey, bitches, let's go to lunch. It, it's <laughs> It, I mean, really, it's, it's well, just, and, and it's, let's. Uh, how about the fact that he says, uh, "See you next Tuesday" in such loving ways to Amber as well? That it's like, is that really the worst word that he's using? Why do you keep bringing it up? Uh, I don't get it. In England, that's like a that's like, "Hey, what's up, dude?" Uh, it's it's a different way how you use France. things. And he lives in France, so I, I don't. The way they're doing things, it's just so clearly theatrical and out of context. And I still am just so dist I'm so frustrated by they just and i hope it doesn't work uh that they keep using the drugs and alcohol as sort of oh well if he's drug because that, that's what happened in the uk right you were there laura it really well, does seem like the judge but well if he's a drunk he must have done what he, he must have forgotten and done it right well it's a known issue especially here in the united states now johnny had some other lawsuits tm tmg's business manager his lawyer things like that they tried to bring in drug and alcohol use it was ruled inadmissible as it's highly prejudicial to juries. We know that, that anybody who does that must be a bad person. Therefore, everything he does must be bad. So it's highly prejudicial. It's very often ruled out. In this case, unfortunately, she's made it part of the claims. So it has to be entered. But that's why we know it's always going to be highly prejudicial to a juror. And they're going to push, push, push it. Um, and I wanted to ask you if you noticed this. Um, they are trying to reestablish or redefine domestic violence. And they had Johnny do this with his dad and his mom when his mo dad punched things and broke things or punched him. Don't you agree that there's other parts of abuse in domestic violence, like emotional, like mm -hmm. verbal? Isn't that all part? Of, and that's what they're trying to build on. I thought with these texts and these audios, like he, maybe we can't prove he hit her. Maybe it's likely he hit her, but we can prove and show you the verbal and the emotional. What do you think? Well, that could be. There is a whole movement around the world um, trying to get coercive control as part of the definition of domestic violence. And we just went through it in Washington State where a handful of us um, tried to, to stop uh, the change of the law in Washington State, but we, didn't, we weren't successful. Um, so now... All, um, all sorts of things that would be considered um, maybe emotional abuse, maybe just normal behavior are have been thrown in with domestic violence. Um, yeah. So I'd, I'd like to talk about the, I'd like to help people understand Do it. Uh, how to weight this. Um, so we need a continuum for any behavior that could be considered domestic violence. And so, just call it DV moving forward because otherwise they're going to just. Oh, you know, I'm sorry. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, thank no. you for reminding me. I apologize. YouTube okay. laws. Yeah. Um, so, so let's put uh, let's put yelling 
on a continuum. So we can go from zero, not at all abusive. You know, you're yelling at somebody, don't step in front of that truck, um, to a high end, very abusive. And so this continuum gets more and more. But anything, absolutely anything that we might look at as an abusive behavior could also be a normal, healthy behavior. And this is where people really get tripped up. So let's take jealousy because they are trying to hammer this thing, trying to present Johnny as unreasonably jealous. So make a jealousy continuum for, for it being abusive. Over here is not at all. A jealousy that's not abusive is a jealousy that is, is based on reality. And we go way up to a jealousy that is super abusive where somebody, you know, hits their partner because they have this paranoid delusion around jealousy. Um, and so they're counting on people looking at things really black and white. And most people do look at it black and white. So what, when I look at, at uh, Johnny's, um, what they're calling jealousy, we see a lot of reason for him to have those suspicions about his wife. I don't know that the, the jury's ever going to see that. But oh, they will. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Okay. It's coming. Some of the, one of the things that came out in the UK, for example, was about James Frankel when she told Johnny and I think other people that she was uncomfortable around him. She found him very, and this was the word used in the UK trial, rapey. Yeah. So, so about it, James Franco. Set it up. She yeah, said that about him? She's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm he does. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but anyway, continue. Uh, she said that about him, but then was that before or after she was caught in the elevator with him? Well, well, the elevator would be, I think that was like May 22nd. So that was, wouldn't be what we would call during the relationship. But she had done a movie with him. And then she was going to do another movie. And that was the discussion. He's like, why do you want to? Do, do a movie with this man again after you just said you feel uncomfortable with them. I don't get it. And that's, so I think he's quite confused about if you feel that way, why, you know, like the jealousy is like, are you, why do you want to be with him? Are you trying to tell me that you're not attracted to him, that he's rapey, but you are? I mean, she's sending mixed signals to him about this, uh, like, uh, you know, being out all night from after an after party and not coming until 5 a.m. with, and he's like, you're sending me different signals here. Right. So how am I supposed to? Yeah, it's interesting when you add that because yeah, that that can explain why Johnny maybe was jealous. It was more looking out for her because you've complained about him in the past and now you're with him. It doesn't make any sense. Which then she's trying to use is that is that part of the manipulation too, Anne? Of like, there maybe is an actual reason why Johnny is asking these questions or pushing back on a guy, but then she's gonna twist it to her own narrative and use the slight thing. So that way Johnny is like, well, I guess I did say I did challenge you about him, uh, but she can sort of adjust the narrative to her direction. Well, and it's part of gaslighting. Okay. So, so gaslighting is crazy making and gaslighting is uh, undermining the other person's reality, sense of sense of trust of their own sense of reality. So if Johnny has good reason to be suspicious that Amber is fooling around, and I think there's lots of evidence out there floating around that she has good, he has good reason to be suspicious, then he, he voices that and what he gets back is all this pushback. No, you're crazy. You're wrong. I'm not doing anything. How dare you? That's part of the whole gaslighting abuse routine. And it is crazy making. Uh, she is definitely crazy making. That's that's <laughs> that's for sure. Oh, sorry. I see Lewis. I think Stephanie didn't come in. Go ahead, Laura. Go ahead. I'm trying to find the quote. And I'm afraid I'm going to misstate it. But in the UK trial, uh, I think it was a testimony. It could have been a witness statement where she said, um, I wouldn't let Johnny see. And I don't know all the production words, but maybe the daily list of what the scene was going to be because she didn't know what the scene was going to be. But then she said something, and, and maybe you've heard this, that she, I, I had them tell Johnny the scenes were worse than they actually were. Like, I would, I would exaggerate these sexual scenes to be worse than they actually were so that when you see them, he wouldn't be so upset. And I'm like, wait a minute, why would you say they're worse than you were actually filming? So it seemed like she was building this narrative to get him riled up. Yeah, no doubt. And I... 
Interesting. But Johnny, Johnny said something in the trial this week about, you know, Amber was looking for a fight. So often, Amber was looking for a fight. And I, you know, I think that that's a good describer of, of the life he was experiencing. Yeah, it, it's so it's so clear to hear that as we listen to all the audios and things. And it's just it's going to be so fascinating to see Amber's way of presenting it. It's going to be so frustrating, but I, I'm, I'm curious where they're going to go with it. But I'm most looking forward to then the cross of Am once Amber's laid out her story, because I think that's when things are going to get really, really good, because I'm imagining they're holding back or planning things or preparing things um, to then just strike back. Once Amber said her side of it, which she's sort of trying to she's trying to negate Johnny's right now in the cross here. But uh, when we get to do that for her, I'm, I'm hoping that Ben and the team are able to really just start swiping uh, back and forth. What did you think of Ben's uh, and, and welcome, Lewis? Good, Lewis hey, how report. are you, ladies? Welcome. Awesome insight. Um, uh, I was going to say, what did you, what did, uh, what did you both, all three of you, but what I, I want to get Lauren and Ann real quick first, what did you think of Ben's approach? I know we're Johnny fans, et cetera, but step back, look at it objectively. Why do you think that Rottenborn is just peppering and doing this, uh, barrage of things with the, did I say that correctly? Yes. Did I, you know, is that correct? Did I say it correct? Yes. What do you, do you see any benefit to it from the other side or, or, or you have trouble seeing any benefit? I, I see him as an extension of the abuser. He he's he's abusing Johnny too. Would so he demeans him. He talks down to him. Um, he cuts him off. You know, one of the things we know from um, that Johnny doesn't had didn't have a voice in in the relationship. Johnny didn't have a voice in the in the couple's appointments. We hear that in the testimony of the of the, uh, Dr. Anderson. Um, and here it is again. He doesn't have a voice. He gets cut off. Um, and I, you know, my question is, would an attorney who is questioning a woman who is accusing his, her partner of being abusive, would they treat that woman this way? Hmm. And it'll be one of the things I really love the soft voice of Johnny's um, attorney. I'm, I'm afraid I don't remember her name. Count Vasquez? Jessica Myers. Oh. Jessica Myers was questioning him. Okay. Um, I just love the softness of her, of her tone. Um, yeah. I it's think true. It's, Johnny's uh, legal side's way calmer and nicer to listen to than Rottenborn or definitely not Elaine. She's the hardest person to listen to. <laughs> And that's yeah. going to affect a jury because it just makes them unlikable, no? Yeah. Well, I think they're trying Maybe. to offset this monster persona. Why would these women be so nice and supportive of him if he's such a monster? And look at his lawyers and, you know, they're all soft-spoken. They're all strong. I mean, these, these they're leading the case. They're asking more questions than Ben Chu is. Yeah. So they're showing is, that let's women, be honest, strong, that's powerful, intelligent women. Totally on purpose. To and very smart of him to do that, to have female lawyers there being front and center and vocal, because you're right. It it helps to show that he's not aggressive. Right. And that they're comfortable around him. Yep. Let me just then, uh, talk about the what uh, Rottenborn did. He had to get all of these texts in authenticated by Johnny or their hearsay. So it was rapid fire. Did I read that right? Did I read that right? And they, he overloaded the jury when they left for the big, for the weekend. All these terrible things. I watched him. He timed it. Wanted to end on that video. And he did. Thought that was a lot to do with it. He didn't want Johnny explaining. But in the meantime, this jury had three days to think. And Anne, I have another question for you. And I think you didn't mm -hmm. like this. Johnny thought about he fell in love with a false woman. She presented this phony side that she liked his hobbies. She dressed a certain way. She liked old blues music, certain authors. She really misrepresented him so he would fall in love, right? Have yes. you seen her in the courtroom imitating him? Clothing, the mm -hmm. bee tie. Yes. Yesterday, she pulled out reading glasses that had the clear frame. So Has she I ever worn glasses before she presented, either? <laughs> um, I've seen her use reading glasses a couple that I saw had the clear frame that Johnny has. Ugh. Oh, even the frame. Wow, she turns it up. Well, and I want to say about the throat <laughs> text uh, text messages, they were from 2013 when they were dating. Uh. And it really fits with my love bombing theory um, 
you know, sure, she, you know, absolutely. Part of it is best sex you've ever had, and um, there's the B. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, I did. A, that's I noticed that. That's, that's that. Come on, yeah. That like, how do you? That's so intentional. Yeah, so for people to realize that that Johnny wore the outfit that you just showed of Johnny, that was the first day of trial. That was jury selection, right? That was Johnny's yeah. first day, and then yeah. the second day, and then two days she later, shows up. yeah. This is this is uh, this is her, and and notice she's wearing a captain's jacket. Yeah, this is a captain's jacket. We also uh, noticed the the day he put his hair in a ponytail. The next day, we all knew her hair in a ponytail <laughs> oh my god i mean what i hope the psycho. jury picks this up to see how um just a, a narcissistic gaslighting she is in in my opinion uh, so it, it, it's and john stalking. said how she got me yeah it's stalking like yes. behavior this dress oh that's a good one go back to that andy well here's the po and then there's the ponytail and then she does the ponytail uh, -huh. uh yeah they're trying to copy all the it, it's it's bizarre it, it's too convenient. Go like, back up a little bit. Go back up a little bit. There's a picture with the Gucci on the cuff. There. Oh. So people are also saying, can this jury relate to these celebrities? Now, Johnny, I mean, they all know he has money. There's no doubt about that. He's been dressed in, I would say, conservative suits every day, three-piece mm -hmm. suits, nice tie. But she's flashing a Gucci label there. Now, is that going to make her relatable to this jury? Or are they going to just say, oh, my God, these celebrities are just coming down here. See, I wouldn't even notice. our time. <laughs> I'd have been like, what is I wouldn't even seen it. But, yeah, if you're into fashion, you would. Well, and I'll Lewis, say that I, you... noticed, I did notice she had a label in it, but I didn't get a good picture of what it was. So, yeah, the jury might have noticed it. I got to ask. Uh, I know Steph would have noticed it because Steph's, uh, Steph's a fashionista. Hey, Steph. Welcome, Steph, the alter nerd. Fun. Uh, Lewis, would you have would you would you have noticed the tag and thought, oh, uh, she's got a Gucci blazer? Be honest. I, I think this is mostly something noticed by women. Like, uh, to be honest with you, like a lot of like girlfriends I've had or whatever, they talk about their shoes and like we don't care about shoes. Like, yeah. you know, women spend hours and hours getting the <laughs> right you know, shoes. Like, you know where oh. I learned that, Lewis? Yes, it's right behind me. The Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> <laughs> Who looks at a man's shoes? Ever since then, I realized, oh, man, you got to. And, and women, I know they look at the shoe. Guys out there, don't be lazy on the shoes. Uh, it's, they, they do look. Are you taking care of yourself? Are you presenting yourself nicely? Are you organized? It, it's it's part of it. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I, I'm with you, Lewis. I, I wouldn't have looked. I wouldn't have noticed. Yeah, a lot of this has been, I've been saying before, ladies, maybe I'm wrong, but a lot of this seems to be playing to the jury. We don't know who they are, or what they look like, or whatnot. So, like the way uh, things are being handled, like constantly uh, talking about drinking, right? So probably the jury looks like a bunch of people that don't drink. So if you don't drink, you think as soon as you take one drink, you don't know what you're doing and you lost total control. We know that people that have that do drink, that's not the case, right? So I don't know. I think it's all playing the jury. Um, I don't know if they notice. The clothes. If it's all men, then no. <laughs> well, I did want to take a moment. Uh, bear with me, Laura and Anne, because I, I was waiting till these two came in because I did want to just make a quick announcement. Uh oh. Uh, because uh, I got a little emotional today, guys. I got a little emotional today because we passed 300,000 subscribers. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I just can't yeah. even. I, I, if, uh, just this summer, I was celebrating 200,000 uh, I was uh, this, and then uh, not too long ago, we were celebrating a, a, a hundred thousand where I got that plaque, which made me yeah. emotional last time. Cause I, my son, I did YouTube wouldn't give me the plaque guys. They were literally not going to give me the plaque. And then I, yeah. I complained cause my son, my nine year old son Sawyer was really like, Oh, he loves YouTube. Oh, you're going to get the plaque. You're going to get the plaque. And I just hated the fact that I'm like, no, I'm not getting the plaque. So I pushed and they finally sent me the plaque. And I was very emotional getting to share that moment with him. Oh. And I try to share all these milestones with him. That's but awesome. uh, guys, I just have to thank you. And I have to thank these two down there, Lewis and Steph, especially so many more. But they've been here through all this past hundred thousand uh, to get us as quickly as we zoomed past this. And I just Lewis and Steph, you know, I love you. I'm so grateful. You know, I, I, I just I just quickly since we had a lot of people watching, I want to thank all you guys. You've been tuning in and I hope you'll stay stay because 
I feel proud. Yes, we're covering a trending story. I know you're all watching because of Johnny, but I see a lot of you come in and really having fun of what we've built here, and we've, we've had some time to get it better, and I'm just so grateful that you're finding our community. We like to try and give you honest coverage and news, but make it more interactive and make it more fun and have you be feel like you're part of it in the chat and with us. And so I, if you're having fun, I hope you'll stick around and, and stay tuned. And I just real quickly to say thank you to all of you, like, and to inspire you guys, this this story, I connect to it a lot. If you don't know my backstory, um, I don't want to get all into it now. You can look it up. Um, the, the mods can share the link or whatever. But I got canceled right at the beginning of Me Too. I, I made yeah. mistakes. I was unfaithful to my wife. It was the darkest point of my life. I was shamed publicly. I, people lied. People then just railroaded me, piled on. Everyone on the Internet turned their back. People I was so close to just wouldn't return my texts. All of it in the air, and I and I I had made mistakes, and a lot of people were disappointed in me from a personal standpoint. But allegations like Amber's were put against me, and I had the texts. I knew it was there. I was talking to lawyers. I was getting wrongfully fired. It was I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy, but I am so grateful to my family and all you guys and friends because I got back up. I kept going. I knew I was good at this. I refused to let those people t stop me from making content on here. And these moments seem silly, I know, to a lot of people who cares, but it, it does. I got to be honest. It's very to, to see this and see you guys tuning in. It, it, I, I don't want to get emotional right now, but I just want to thank you all. And I do want to celebrate that. And I want to thank these two, especially for being here. So, Steph Lewis, you know I love you. Thank you guys all for doing this. Let's get, to, a, let's get to half a million now. I, who would have thought? Friend. Uh, but incredible journey that we've been here and, and why I'm, I'm partly so connected to this story is I, I just, I hate when someone's wrongfully accused. I hate when the yeah. people pile on and shame people publicly. Yeah. And it's just not right. Men can be taken advantage of too it happens um i want to believe all women i do but i have trouble because they lied about me and a lot of them like amber do we have to believe everybody we have to try to really take in what you say take it seriously take in the other we got to hear everybody else and we got to respect due process and in a lot of ways that's what this is right now while people are we, we got to prepare everybody because the sad reality is he could lose this case and, I, and i'm only saying that because i want to prepare us but it doesn't mean he loses if he loses this case, because this case is specifically about one article and defamation. And the sad reality the of the legal amendment. technicalities is just who knows where they're going to go with this. But I think in the world of the public opinion and the actual reality of things, is it going to clear Amber? Hell no. Everything that's coming out now is, is has exposed her, and I think that's really what he wanted. I think being able to get in the stand and do that opening is really what Johnny wanted, and I can relate to him so much in that getting my video and my statement out there with the facts and the, and the receipts. It was just like, like a weight off of my shoulders. So uh, I'm so grateful to all you guys in this community who are joining here, watching this coverage, our Brittany coverage. You came in through our Gabby Petito coverage. We will keep giving you uh, the pop culture justice, as we call it here, keep you entertained, keep you informed. And thank you guys for helping us get to 300,000. Can you believe it? Oh my God. Thank you guys so much. Uh, very, very grateful to all you guys. Uh, you know what's crazier than that? What's up? There's tw over 23,000 people watching right now. I guarantee you, oh, not, wow. all you, not at all of you are subscribed either. So I'm going to place the challenge to you all or ask you all to please subscribe. If you're not subscribed, if you think you're subscribed, double check because YouTube's a little mm. funny. And let's get Andy today okay. to 305,000 just for good measure. I know we could do that. Get the likes up. Come on. Let's do it. Let's go, people. Best hype. Get a hype man like Lewis and Steph. They're the best. And we will be in Vegas next week, guys. In fact, you can see it here on wow. our header. Brand new header. We are going to be doing our coverage from Vegas live next week. I don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to do it, damn it. Uh, and we got some special guests coming in. Uh, excited to have uh, – we're uh, sponsored by Michael Jackson 1, the Cirque du Soleil show out in Vegas. We'll be seeing it Thursday. Uh, they've wow. got us a suite. Uh, so excited. Uh, we'll be, we're, 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 we're celebrating Michael Jackson as well as doing the Johnny Depp coverage and all the other news that breaks throughout next week. But we'll be doing it live in Vegas. And we'll be in person. Oh, my God. Lewis, Steph, and I will be in person. Also, spoiler alert, guess, Steph, who, guess who's trying to make a, an appearance? 
appearance in person to meet us. Mr. Christopher Melcher! Oh! What? Oh! Um, he's trying to see if he can make it. If not, we'll leave Zoom, but he's trying because it's closer to him. So a, a lot of a lot of guest stars coming in. That's awesome. I'm, I'm also real. Yes. I'm working on getting Taj Jackson, Michael's uh, nephew's going to come in and report on one of our Johnny days. Uh, there's a lot of parallels to the, what happened to Johnny in the media and what happened to Michael. We're going to go through a lot of that as well. So lots more that I'm very excited about. So stay tuned. Lots coming here on the channel. Latest.